I said in one of my uh, homilies in the past during the lockdown period uh, that before the, the lockdown, uh, I used to look like Brad Pitt. Uh, but after being in the lockdown for three months and couldn't go to my barber, I look like Brad Pitt. Okay? But now, you know, after three months, I was able to go to my barber and uh, had a very good uh, haircut. And now I look like Brad Pitt again. Okay? <laughs> anyway. So, so it's good, you know, it's good that uh, the, the church are reopening right now and we see people um, coming to church on Sundays. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're still doing, we still don't have the live stream technology. That's why we can't open the, the, the mass for, for the public to attend, okay? But uh, hopefully in a few more weeks, we will be able to have that te technology. And uh, so we will be able to live stream at the same time, have the public attend the Sunday mass here at St. Mary's. Okay, uh, so I don't know about you, uh, have you ever experienced being in a situation wherein you need to speak the truth to people, but you are afraid to do so? Okay, maybe you are talking to a, a person from a different religion, okay, or a, a maybe a, a from a, a person from um, a different Christian denomination, and they're talking about some truths that they believe in that is contradicting to what you believe. Or maybe um, a family member or a friend or a relative, you know, maybe they're, they're not really following the moral teachings of the church. Or maybe, you know, you see the social injustice that is happening right now. You know, uh, right now uh, in the States, there's a, a demonstration uh, because of the racial discrimination that is happening. You know, with, uh, with the, the incident that, that happened with George Floyd. And right now, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement is, is, uh, is, uh, is really growing. And, you know, there, there's, there's something in us that we need to speak the truth. But also at the same time, there's that fear in us to share it. Why? Okay? And I think it has to do with, the, the, uh, with rel relative... Relativism, okay? What's relativism, okay? Relativism is that it might be true for you, but not for me. So it is the individuals who determines the truth rather than discovering the truth, okay? So, of course, you know, if, if somebody doesn't believe in your truth and they have their own truth, they will be passionate about it. That's why there will be conflict, okay? And, and because of that, when you share your truth, that is contradicting to their truth, you will be persecuted. You, know? you will be rejected. Okay? You, could, you could be put into prison or even put to death. Okay? And uh, so that's why it's, it, it's not easy. It's not easy to speak the truth. That's why there's a temptation to just be silent, be quiet. Okay? Or there's a temptation to just soften the truth. So that what will happen is that um, you will be able, to, uh, um, be able to not offend other people and have like an easier way out, uh, away from uh, any suffering. So, but we need to speak the truth. You know, in, in the Old Testament, the Lord asked the prophet to speak the truth to his people of Israel. And today, in our first reading today, Prophet Jeremiah was asked to speak the truth. And of course, the truth, the truth hurts. You know, because the truth, when, when, when the prophet was speaking the truth, it convicts the people of their sinfulness. That's why in our, in our first reading today, you know, Jeremiah cried out, it says here, I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. And then Jesus, but this is what Jeremiah said, but the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail and they will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. So you see here, how, what, what, what Jeremiah experienced, he, he experienced the persecution from his own very people by speaking the truth to them. And Jesus experienced that himself. He was speaking the truth to, to, to the Jewish people, 
and, uh, and as he speak the truth, he was, he was exposing the people of, their, um, of the intentions of their heart, of the hypocrisy of, of uh, the Jewish religious uh, uh, leaders, okay? And, and because of that, he was persecuted. He was rejected by his people and he was crucified and died on the cross for speaking the truth. And Jesus said that to his disciples also, you know, in, in, in John chapter 15, verse 20, he said, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Okay, and we know that the, uh, the, the, the apostles, all of them except John, died a martyr's death. And we see also during the early church, a lot of people were martyred because of this. And one of the modern uh, day uh, saints who really suffered for uh, being a messenger of truth is Blessed Jersey Popiusco. Uh, anyone familiar of Blessed Jersey Popiusco? No? Okay. So Blessed Jersey Popiusco, he was born in Poland in September 14, 1947, okay? So he, he became a priest, and Poland was under the communist regime, okay? And uh, during that time, uh, there was this solidarity movement uh, created by the, the, the trade union of the steel workers. So uh, in, to have this like peaceful revolution against the, the Polish government, and they asked Blessed us, uh, Father Jerzy Popuyusko, to be their chaplain. So Father Jerzy Popuyusko will celebrate a monthly mass for the fatherland. And you know how many people would attend? 50,000 Polish people would attend that mass. And in that mass, he would speak about the truth, about the importance of practicing the maxims of the gospel, and also abandoning any forms of, viola uh, of violence. So, Saint Father, Father Jerzy Pupuyusko is into positive, pa passive resistance towards the government. And his homilies was, 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 was very, very popular. Uh, it was being broadcast, broadcasted to uh, other countries in, in, in Europe. And the government were starting to be afraid of him. Okay, and some of uh, the famous quotes of, bless, uh, of Father Jerzy Pupiusko is this. He said this, to live in truth is the basic minimum of human dignity, even if the price to defend the truth could be costly. You need to always remain faithful to the truth. Truth can never be betrayed. He also said on another quote, truth never changes. It cannot be destroyed by any decision or legal act. Telling the truth with courage is a way leading directly to freedom. A man, a man who tells the truth is a free man despite external slavery, imprisonment, or custody. Another quote that he said, true love is demanding. It requires sacrifices. Truth, too, must cost something. Truth that does not cost anything is a lie. And bless Father Jersey Pupilisco live out this quote. Okay? He gave up his, he, it cost him his life. Okay? Uh, you know, the, 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 the Polish government wanted to silence him, so they, they, they tried to, to, to threaten him. Okay, they, 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 tr they threw a bomb to his apartment there. Uh, they um, imprisoned him. They inter interrogated him. Uh, but he, they couldn't silence him. So on October 19, 1984, he was abducted. Okay? And for 10 days, people couldn't find where Father Jerzy Pupiusku is. Okay? So after 10, 10 days, they saw his body. It was, they saw the body uh, and they saw it in, in the river, okay? So his hands and, and, and feet were tied. There was a cloth that put inside his mouth and then there was a bag of rocks that was tied around his feet. 
So he drowned. He died. Okay? And, and millions of Polish people attended his funeral. On s- June 6, 2010, he was beatified by Pope Benedict the 16th. Okay? So you see here how speaking the truth costs the life of this, uh, of this priest and mart- mart- martyr. So we need to speak the truth. Why? Because truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? So, and, and we need to speak the truth because for, for people to resist the truth, they are also resisting their salvation. Okay? So, because when we speak the truth, light shines upon people. Okay? And they saw how, um, how, how they are a, a, a sinner. You know, their, their sins are being exposed. And, and it, the Lord is inviting them to repentance. Okay? But another thing is the, the, the reason why we need to, to speak the truth to people is that, yes, their sins could be forgiven, but they, they should also know that the sin is very active in their flesh. And they're powerless overcoming their sins. That's why we, they need to humble themselves and have confidence in the mercy and the grace of God in their life, you know, to, to, to be able to help them overcome uh, the sin, uh, overcome their self-will, and obey the will of God in their life. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, section 1816, it says here, all, okay, it says all, all, however, must be prepared to confess Christ before men and to follow them along the way of the cross amidst the persecution which the church never lacks. Okay? Now, when, 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 when we need to speak the truth, there are two extremes that we need to avoid. One is to keep quiet because we, we want to please other people. We don't want to be rejected by people. And in... In, in, in Galatians 1, chapter 10, it says here, am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still pleasing men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Okay? So, you know, we, we're here not to please people. We can't please everybody. All we need to do is to please God. And when we're pleasing God, that is more than enough, okay? In our gospel today, it says here, fear no one for nothing is, it says here, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell, okay? So, so we're here to please God. Now, the other extreme is we speak the truth but out of judgment, out of superiority. Now, we need to avoid that too. Because when we're sharing the truth out of, out of that motive of being, I'm a superior, okay, or I'm judging you, people will be very defensive, okay? And, and they, they will retaliate. Now, there's, there's a middle option. There's a th- third option that we need all to do, which is to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth in love. It is out of love for them. You know? But even though we, we speak the truth in love, you know, we, we can't expect that we will not be rejected. Jesus spoke the truth in love, and yet he was rejected, crucified, and put the death on the cross. Okay? But Jesus promised us, you know, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, it says there, Matthew 28, verse 20, where it says, uh, For I will be with you until the end of times. And that's the promise of Jesus to each and every one of us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, what does it say there? In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, 
Okay, so let that be our consolation. And you know, in, in two, so that's why we need to preach, you know, in our gospel today, it says here we need to preach the truth from the rooftop. Okay, in two, chap, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort. Be unfailing in patience and in teaching. Okay, so we need to preach the truth in season and out of season. So I'm sure the Lord will, will provide situations in your life wherein you will be given the opportunity to speak the truth to his people. What will be your response? I hope you will not do the two extremes. One is just to keep quiet. The other one is, you know, to, to, to share the truth out of judgment or, or, or out of superiority. You know, let's ask for the grace, you know, to, to have the courage to share the truth out of love. And we need to remember that all of us, all of us, not just priests, all of us are called to be messenger of the truth. Okay? And, you know, we need to share the truth because it is in the truth that will set people free. You know, and as, as, as they follow Jesus, who is the truth, Jesus will lead them to salvation. 